Hi friends. Good morning everyone. I hope all of you are doing good. Thanks for your continuous support on uh, different platforms and uh, keep supporting me with your valuable ratings. If you want to tell any kind of a feedback whether any improvement or anything please don't hesitate because your feedback will be helpful for me. If you are giving a positive uh, appreciation that will give me an encouragement and if you are giving any improvements I don't take it as a negative so don't consider like a negative if you are giving any improvement I will adopt those and definitely I will apply in the further videos so in this video I'm going to tell you about a design of 3PL sales process in 3PL how does the sales process happen and this can be applicable for both ECC and S4 HANA everywhere. Okay. And more into that S4 HANA also, I considered. If you see that uh, overall uh, architecture here, the left hand side uh, company uh, means the main the company where the plant location, everything is available. They are using SAP system. Let's assume that. And 3PL warehouse, the 3PL warehouse is using any third party warehouse system and they are using their own system. Okay. So now company is using SAP MM only, SAP MM SDFI. They're not using warehouse management, but they have given their warehouse to a 3PL, means a third party system. They are using their own warehouse to do their uh, put away, storage, handling the bin, stock, everything they're using that one, okay? So in this design, what kind of things happen? So previously you would have seen uh, an inbound purchase order status goods received i explained in our one of the videos if you have gone through it is good or else you can check on uh, youtube or even on udemy idoc course we have available the 3pl in the inbound process now we are seeing that sales process how does it happen the basic prerequisites we need to understand that one uh, the material master need to be interfaced otherwise uh, you are creating everyday new materials and the 3pl system will not have that material information okay so that based on the initial design what are the material master interface if you are sending that idoc or uh, api log how you are sending that you can send the data or else uh, if you are without material if you are sending that one and 3pl also should have in their system the database so master data like vendors materials customers if you are having interface you try to keep it interface so that you will not have uh, daily hurdles okay or else if you are sending the manual information there will be always issue so master data is already synchronized let's assume that so the process wise, uh, the customer, your customer has sent you, the company's customer has sent a purchase order based on the purchase orders, the sales team has created a sales order where they input that customer reference details like purchase order number, material quantity, all the information. Sales order is created and the sales orders are converted to outbound delivery based on the plan. Okay. For example, the outbound deliveries are created immediately once the sales order is created or else the based on the business requirement, they convert all sales orders to outbound deliveries based on their plan. Weekly plan or monthly plan or daily plan, based on the plan, they convert the sales orders to outbound deliveries. Outbound deliveries will carry the material quantity of each customer and what is the date and estimated uh, date of uh, the delivery date, when they are going to send. All the informations are stored in outbound delivery. So many companies they create outbound delivery once they plan for the sending. So based on the date, they can plan and execute it. So once outbound delivery is created and outbound delivery will have that delivery date and the quantity, material, customer, that information will be sent to 3PL. So mostly we use IDOC uh, nowadays, uh, but uh, I mentioned that APIs also because uh, I'm observing the latest S4 HANA projects. Mostly APIs are being preferred than IDOCs, okay? Even you can use RFC. So that's why I didn't use the technical terms and which is uh, compatible and based on your third party system, based on the compatibility and based on your system, whether you're using ECC or S4 HANA and what kind of capabilities you have. And mostly you can uh, encourage to use APIs and RFCs, okay? So IDOCs also wherever it is uh, required, you can utilize it. That's why I mentioned without going for the technical terms, uh, one of the uh, interfaces you can use to send the outbound delivery information to the 
three PL system. Now the three PL uh, warehouse have got that information, the DOI information. It has the material quantity and the delivery date, estimated delivery, whatever uh, plans they are having the information they received it. Based on the information, uh, they generate the pick slip in their system. Okay, I didn't mention about the pick slip and all because third party system. What kind of uh, in of compatible like what kind of functionalities they have based on that uh, they print the pick slip and the pick slip will be given to the picker and picker will do the picking this is all no information to our sap system okay so picking is completed and once the picking is completed and when they want to ship the loading is initiated so you can say like this process is a goods issue process in their system okay so once the goods issue is initiated uh, via api or rfc or idoc the do what is the delivery number how much material what is the quantity all the information will be sent to sap so based on that information auto pga will be posted here if we can have some uh, like few challenges that uh, delivery was created of 100 quantity and uh, they have to do the pga for 100 only if based on the physical stock if they want to send 90 then they need to send the delivery uh information they have to send that quantity and all the technical challenges we need to handle either we are accepting any partial quantity or not if you don't accept uh, third parties 3pl warehouse cannot issue less than delivery quantity if that is the business requirement we have they cannot send uh, difference quantity if there is agreement that we you can send the difference quantity but send that information so that we will change the delivery quantity first 100 to 90 then do pgi so in this uh, if you are any customization or anything that those things we need to handle here so change the delivery and then pgi if they don't accept the client requirement is we don't allow any partial quantities if there is a shortage physical loss or anything the warehouse have to inform you well in advance so that we will plan accordingly or else the quantity how much is available and both the systems uh, inventory also uh, there will be interface to verify how much inventory at the 3pl how much inventory at the sap system okay so those kind of challenges you need to handle so during design this is a total architecture of the process but when you really work on the processes, definitely you will feel challenges. Just now I mentioned like that. They have a 98 quantity. Can they do issue for 98 or not? That's a business call. If business says that one is based on their actual quantity, we are okay. Then when you are sending for goods issue, and in that uh, API, you need to write the logic that first you change the quantity to 98, whatever quantity they are sending, their quantity is the final quantity. They cannot send more than that. There will be those validations also. For example, 100 quantity, they can send 98, change to 98, then do PGI and then not a billing document. One case one. They want to send 100 out of 100, no issues. They want to send 102. There should be a validation that they cannot send more than delivery quantity. Okay. If they really want to send that uh, SAP team has to amend that outbound delivery to 102, Okay, or they create a new delivery for the remaining two quantity. So those kind of discussions you need to do as a function consultant. Technical team can only work whether you allow, don't allow. Allow, you can go and do one step of change delivery and then PCI. If you don't allow, then they will put a validation not to send the data via interface. Okay, here there will be interface will be there. So these are the uh, area like how uh, you need to understand what kind of challenges can happen in the real time. So billing document is created and once the billing document is created, if they want to send that billing information via API or IDOC, you can send that information to customer. But the invoice copy needs to be sent via email, mostly it be via email to the third party system because uh, the invoice copy and the packing slip, okay, if you want to print a packing slip also. So those uh, documents need to be sent um, to the third party system so that they can do it based on your agreement that one the packing slip they only can print from their system then no need to send from sap so during design you need to see that compatibility and functionalities in 3pl system they have a system where they can print that goods issue packing slip then uh, sap doesn't have to print uh, or else send the email to 3pl system they only can send uh, on their own so the packing slip can be printed at the 3pl system and invoice copy can be printed from sap 
So who has to print and all those information during initial design, we need to discuss and finalize it. So the physical goods will be sent to the customer and uh, IDOC, uh, the EDI information, we, we are going to send to EDI or API, how we are going to send. It will be sent to customer and physical copies will be given. Okay. So let me just show you something. So here invoice copy is there. And uh, so they can print the packing slip. So packing slip can be printed from, you can assume that packing slip can be printed from 3PL system. Okay. So invoice, auto PCI and billing document details are sending. Uh, here DO material quantity will be sent. I can write like a PGI. PGI in third party system will send the DO material quantity. So loading will happen and the data will be sent to the system. And uh, yeah, that's the about this uh, sales process. How does it happen in uh, 3PL? So you need to understand what documents we are going to send and what kind of information we have to carry out between the both the systems. Who is the source system and who is the destination system? Do they really need any kind of status? For example, we send outbound delivery to 3PL and uh, 3PL, the data has shared to successfully to 3PL, they can send one kind of a status. Okay, you can use APRAC uh, in the IDOC related or else we can use uh, that API call just to inform that one, the DO is success like that. So where do you want to track it? So those also we need to consider. Okay, so auto PGI is completed and after PGI is completed, billing document, invoice document is successfully shared to them via email. That's the information, it's a confirmation to the system. Okay, so the invoice copy, why am I mentioning that invoice copy will be sent to here? Because generally when you're sending the stock to customer uh, via truck or container, we need to keep uh, these physical documents to give to the driver, like packing slip, invoice copy, so that he will carry those documents uh, along with the goods to the customer location. So if there is any um, toll gates or any verification, he will have information what he's sending and what are the information he's carrying along with the goods, whether it is uh, really a sales process and who is the customer, who is the vendor, and uh, both are legally registered for the respective norms and uh, are they paying the tax, what tax they're going to pay. All the information is available in the invoice copy so the driver needs to carry those things. Okay, if it is a import, like a export related one, then they need additional documentation related to the customs and uh, additional country specific any documents. There will be different documents can be available. And during the design, we need to check with the business. Those documents can be printed from any third party or do we need to print from SAP or via uh, PGI. During PGI, we need to print or uh, during the billing document PF03. From there, you have you need additional one or two pages based on the uh, export customer, then we need to send these details. So these kind of all information we need to understand. When can you discuss this, these many details if you understand the whole process? What is sales process? Uh, what is uh, purchasing process? During purchasing, what kind of tax, we input tax we pay? What kind of uh, other duties we are going to pay? So who, who will pay the custom duty? Okay, we will pay and uh, vendor can pay. Uh, we will charge to vendor or uh, how will be the payment process? Is it a monthly or uh, if it is a purchasing? In case of sales, what kind of duties we are going to pay? So output tax, okay. Is there any, uh, we have a refundable, non-refundable. So first of all, we need to understand the business process so that definitely we can do better. I hope in this video, you have understood about uh, how does sales process uh, happen in the 3PL. Earlier, we have seen 3PL purchasing, least goods receipt process and all. Now we have seen sales process. If we have any inputs and you worked on different kind of a business scenario for the same sales process, you can always provide your comments under the video. Keep learning, keep supporting each other, rate our courses and follow our videos on different platforms. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.